It is time to talk about something that we have spoken about in the past, but which uh, is important to speak about nonetheless. I'm talking about a type of mutual fund scheme, or rather two types of mutual fund schemes, uh, which a lot of investors tend to jump into whole hog. It may not be the best idea to do so, uh, but at the same time, if you consider that you are well versed with the market and are a seasoned investor, it might do to have a little bit of an allocation to it. I'm talking about sectoral and thematic funds. Rushab Desai, who is the founder of Rupee with Rushab Investment Services, is joining me now. Good evening, Rushab, and thanks so much for taking the time. Uh, let's get down to the nitty gritties of it straight away. Uh, how would you describe thematic funds and uh, also uh, uh, sectoral funds, and how do you differentiate between the two? Hi, Alex. Uh, first of all, good evening and, and thank you so much for having me on your show. Uh, so there are different uh, sectors in our economy and globally. Now, uh, each sector will have companies specifically related to that particular sector. Now, these sectors broadly consist of banking, financial services, pharma, information technology, uh, auto, metals, energy, reality, and so on. Now, what does a sectoral fund do? A sectoral fund will invest into companies of a particular sector. Now, example, a pharma fund will only invest into the pharma sector and the pharma companies. And a banking fund will only invest into the banking sector and banks. Now, just like sectors, there are different types of themes as well. Now, broadly, uh, technology, infrastructure, uh, banking and financial services combined, consumption, uh, pharma health, pharma and healthcare compound and so, and so on. Now, a, a thematic fund will invest into different companies and can also invest into two or more sectors relating to that particular theme. I'll give you an example. Uh, a pharma and healthcare thematic fund will invest into drug manufacturing companies, can invest uh, into diagnostic companies and can also invest into the uh, insurance sector as well. Another example, a classic example is the infrastructure theme. So infrastructure theme uh, will invest into construction uh, sector, energy sector, uh, materials, uh, metals, capital goods, and, and so on. Now, the major difference uh, between a sectorial and a thematic fund is that the sectorial fund focuses on a particular sector. A thematic fund focuses on two or more sectors and, and, and the theme. So a sectorial fund is more concentrated in nature, and a thematic fund is, is comparatively more diversified. Let's also talk about the performance because one would assume that like the sectors that they represent and like the themes that they represent, their uh, performance will also likely be very cyclical. If I talk about the way that healthcare performed uh, in the immediate aftermath of the pandemic or you talk about IT services and technology as a theme that uh, got a fillip because of our work from home uh, during the course of the pandemic, some of those are now reversing. So, what is the performance of these uh, types of funds been? Absolutely, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. So mostly all sectors and, and themes are going to be cyclical and volatile. So they will, they will perform in selective, selective years and, uh, and selective cycles, and they, they may not perform in the rest of the, rest of the set of the years and, and cycles. So also uh, along with you know, uh, the fundamental growth of the individual companies, uh, sectorial performance is highly dependent on the macro growth and the government policies. Uh, what I mean by this is if, if the macroeconomical growth and the government policies are not favorable for, for that particular sector, it can, it, there, there can be a slowdown and you know, there can be a stagnation and, and, and underperformance of that particular sector. And maybe all of the companies within that sector sectors uh, uh, are affected. Now, on the other hand, thematic funds are a little more diversified. So thus, uh, themes may not be as affected uh, as, as sectors because they are, they are more diversified in, in nature. Also, I want to explain a little bit to your viewers, there is a difference between uh, volatility and, and cyclicality. Now, the high intensity of movement uh, in returns of, 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 uh, of going up and down is, is called volatility. And... Uh, cyclicality means performance in in certain number of years and and non performance in in, a, in another certain number of years so uh, sectorial and themes are going to be very volatile and very cyclical uh, a classic example is is the real, real estate index the nifty reality index 
since 2010 till 2022 is still actually in the negative territory means for 12 years at a stretch it has not generated any any returns at all but at the same time the uh, the index has generated returns in pockets so now uh, you know in 2010 2011 the 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 sector the reality sector was negative 25 and negative 51 percent at absolute terms but in 2012 you know it, it gave 48 percent same it goes in 2017 it gave 107 percent so you see i mean uh, so all of these uh, sectors and themes are going to be very volatile and cyclical and, and timing uh, the entry and exit within these sectors and, and themes has to be done very well. Okay, so that really is the bottom line. I was going to ask you about that because there are certain uh, secular themes that one would assume will run across various years, right? If you talk about banking and you talk about financial services, then this is something that accounts for a large part of even the benchmark index, Nifty 50. So if you simply buy the Nifty 50 and you hold it, you're essentially holding a large chunk of that in banking and financial companies. Um, what I'm trying to get at is if you are savvy and we'll come to who should buy this and how much to buy, but if you are savvy, would you say that the right strategy or approach to have when you're talking about both sector and thematic funds is to... If you feel, for example, that IT is now undergone a correction, I look at the Nifty IT and uh, based on the data that you've shared with us, it's down 28% year to date. Uh, but the last couple of years have been phenomenal for IT. Uh, you look at HCL tech results, you look at TCS results, you say, okay, the attrition is high, uh, there is pressure on margins, but at the same time, the management seems to be confident about the growth going forward so you say now is a good opportunity considering that a third of uh, value has been lost 27 percent lower you make an allocation based on what you think is going to happen going forward is that how you do it absolutely alex so generally i don't recommend uh, sectorial funds and most the thematic funds uh, because it's it's practically very difficult and impossible to predict cycles you know that which cycle would would do well and which cycle would not do well. On face value, the right way to look at it is that, you know, if a particular sector has beaten down uh, with the price, say like 50, 60% and the valuations have substantially gone down, uh, take a tactical bet in it and invest in, in it in a little bit. And when, when you know, it comes into a bull phase and, you know, when, when, when it's in profit, just book profits and get out. You know, that's what I would uh, uh, suggest investors to do you know long-term uh, methodology really doesn't work because they really perform in uh, banking and financial services is exception uh, but most of the sectors and most of the themes are going to be very very cyclical although alex i'm very bullish on certain themes uh, uh you know mainly because you know themes are a cumulative of uh, you know sectors and they have a very good potential of performing very very well in the in the long run so the, these funds are meant for savvy investors who have uh, surplus money, play around money, uh, you know, who can track the sector's macroeconomic data and, you know, analyze cycles very well, not meant for SIP investors uh, at all. Another reason I would like to share is why I don't recommend, you know, sectorial funds is that if you see on a point point return basis, the sectorial and thematic funds at the category average level have actually not performed that great against the flexi cap and multi cap category at the category average level. The multi cap and flexi cap funds are going to be more consistent in in the long run, right? So if I'm getting consistency, uh, you know, in in the flexi cap and and multi cap uh, funds, you know, why I should venture into uh, a, a sectorial fund in in my view? Interesting uh, comparison that you've drawn. I would like to talk about it just a little, little bit before we. Uh, you know, move forward and I, I want to stress on the reason why you're comparing uh, flexi cap and multi cap to sector because uh, on the one hand you have flexi caps uh, that are very nimble in terms of the picking and choosing of stocks in sectors within uh, the ambit of multiple market cap categories and on the other hand you have a fairly rigid sort of a structure for a sector uh, where you don't have the bandwidth to go outside, right? Uh, very clearly defined boundaries. Would it be that you choose a flexi cap 
to give you a kicker. You put it in your satellite allocation to your portfolio. The core of your portfolio is something that will give you uh, you know, steady returns over a period of time. The flexi cap is what's meant to give you that kicker. Is that how you're looking at flexi cap versus sectoral and thematic? Absolutely. The flexi cap, uh, if you see the the portfolio at the category average level of flexi cap mutual funds, you know, T percent is 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 banking and financial services as as a theme. Uh, uh, technology companies are around. 18, 18 to 20 percent. Uh, consumption uh, companies are around 30 percent, and pharma and healthcare around around 7 to 10 percent. So you're getting, you know, all these themes which which I'm personally bullish on. You're getting all of these themes within the flexi cap uh, uh, mutual funds itself. So why I should go out and you know select a particular uh, uh, sector or a, or a particular theme? Might as well just stick with with these uh, uh, themes within the flexi cap funds and you know just sit tight for the long run and let 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 the fund manager do do their job um hypothetically speaking if an investor is savvy and if an investor has uh, the confidence and conviction that a particular sector is going to do phenomenally well they want to make an allocation towards a particular sectoral fund or a thematic fund what is the extent to which they should allocate and obviously, this is part of your um, satellite portfolio. But how much would you recommend that they allocate? So for general investors, uh, up to 10% is fine. Uh, for a little bit of uh, uh, investors who are willing to take aggressive bets, to maximum up to 20%. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't like to cross the 20% mark. But again, as you correctly said, once your core portfolio is taken care of, only and only then uh, people who have surplus money can look in. Uh, look at investing in in the site in in these uh, categories uh, in their satellite portfolio. Uh, like you also pointed out, uh, these are highly cyclical in nature, and therefore the exit is almost as important as the entry. You need to be able to understand when to get out of these investments. But having said that, you mentioned Rushab, and you I think you pointed out a couple of those themes as well that you're very bullish on. Could you talk about what they are and why you say? They are bullish. Uh, you're bullish on them. Sure. So I'm I'm very bullish on four themes. One is the global technology theme. Uh, second is the pharma and healthcare theme. Third is the banking and finance theme. And fourth is the consumption. I'll just give you briefly why I'm recommending these these four themes. See, today we are living in a technology age, Alex. Right. And day by day, technology is going to increase rapidly, and we are already dependent on technology so much. So the demand for technology products is going to increase phenomenally. That's number one. Number two, uh, we saw, uh, you know, we actually didn't expect the pandemic to hit us so hard. A lot of people, you know, started to get so conscious about their health to get regular checkups. You know, now people are, ha have started to aggressively go into the in insurance, getting, prop getting themselves secured in every kind of way. So I am very bullish on the farm and healthcare thing because we are going to see increase uh, 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 demand in the farm and health healthcare sector as well. Now, fourth is the backbone of our of our economy, which is banking and finance. Right? We are doing transactions ev practically every day. You know, so banking and finance is going to play a very important role in the growth of our economy as well. And fourth is the consumption thing. Now, consumption consists of a lot of things, a lot of things, uh, consumer durables, fast moving uh, consumer goods, uh, you know, consumer services, tele telecommunication, power, uh, you know, et cetera. So we are going to consume as the population increases globally, we are going to consume, uh, uh, you know, uh, food products or, or some things or, or a car or, a, or an AC or a television, et cetera, you know, so I am very, very bullish on the consumption theme as well. So these are the four themes which I feel, uh, you know, has a very strong potential, growth potential going, going ahead. Now, uh, the global uh, uh, technology theme, you know, can be very well, uh, you know, taken care of by investing in, you know, NASDAQ 100, which was a technology heavy index and Mira Asset NYSE Fang Plus uh, fund uh, in my view. Fantastic. 
last very quick question. I think uh, a lot of people will be wondering if this is the right time to invest in any one of the themes that you've just suggested. Is it? Rushab, the last question, which is some of the themes that you've mentioned that you're bullish on, is this the right time to invest in any of them? Oh, absolutely, Alex. I, I feel this is a very right time because valuations have gone very cheap. Uh, if you look at the, the valuations in India, US and China economy, US and China have been reasonably, reasonably cheap. India has gone very reasonable. So, and the, uh, you know, NASDAQ 100 index has fallen more than 25%. The FANG plus index has fallen uh, close to 30, 31% uh, negative in, in absolute terms. So I really feel uh, you know, this is the right time to stagger your investments from a three to four months time frame because uh, you know there is a fear that we might we might enter a recession as well. You know, and we are expecting uh, U.S. inflation data to come out come out today, and it is expected to come a little higher. So I feel take uh, opportunity of of this correction and this this reasonable valuations to invest, and and I see tremendous uh, growth in terms of returns in five to seven years uh, uh, time frame. Thank you so much, Rishabh, for uh, this conversation. It was indeed a very insightful one. Thanks, as always, for taking the time. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for having our show.